Hey guys, welcome back. Today we shall be talking about the monkeypox virus, which is a big time misnomer because the impression that it gives us that it comes from the monkeys, whereas that is not the case. So what is the reservoir of infection that is documented? What are the clinical manifestations? How do you differentiate it from smallpox? Do we have drugs available to fight it? Are they FDA approved? Uh, do we have vaccines available for it? What What is the brand name of these vaccines? Uh, I'm going to discuss all of this in this very short and a precise video. So do hang on right till the end of the video. And first we are going to focus on the epidemiology part. So at the moment, uh, this is the monkeypox tracker website, which mentions as of now, that is when I'm recording this, uh, 8th of June 2022, there are about 1,111 cases. And most of these cases are concentrated in Europe, mainly the countries where we are getting this would be UK, then in Spain, France and Germany. And a lot of this would be related to these, uh, I would say, rare parties that occur in these countries, especially in the summer season, which will help in, uh, in increasing the amount of interpersonal contact and that would result in spread of this infection. So one of the modalities, the common one would be droplet infection. Uh, every doctor would be interested in the R0 number for this uh, virus per se. So if we focus on the R0 number for measles, like I can say, then you are aware that the R0 number for measles would be in the range of 15 to 18, which means that one case can be infecting up to 18 uh, patients or 18 people. And that's one of the highly infectious viruses that we are aware of. If you compare that with the Omicron strain, uh, Omicron with COVID-19, the R0 number would be range of 8. Whereas when it comes to this particular infection, it is documented to be something in the range of about one. So at least one case would be infecting another case. And uh, there is a possibility that the number of cases on a global basis will increase. So while I was reading about this infection, as of 5th of June 2022, it was 780 cases in 27 countries. And as I showed you, by 8th of June, the number had increased to beyond 1000. So that's a jump of about 250 cases approximately. Now, when we look at the microbiology section behind this virus, you are aware that this uh, would be belonging to the genus Orthopox virus and the family would be Pox variidae. And this includes the variola and the vaccinia viruses as well. You very well know the variola would be the one which is uh, responsible for causing smallpox and it was eradicated way back in 1978. And when it comes to vaccinia, especially from India, and then when it comes to vaccinia, this was the one that was used for manufacturing of the smallpox vaccine. So it is uh, definitely a lot of interest to see that we have already conquered uh, most of the viruses which are present in this genus. And then suddenly there's a spurt related to this monkeypox virus. Uh, so we need to see where is it coming from. And uh, when you are going to read about it, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control Atlanta mentions that the first uh, discovery of this virus was made way back in 1958. Uh, and this was, a, uh, I would say, a vesiculo, maculo papillo vesicular rash that was found in monkeys for research. So it's not that it is coming from monkeys. It can come from monkeys. I'll mention which country has it been documented to come from monkeys. But initially, because it was found in the monkeys per se, so that name has stuck the monkey box per se. But the first human case, that is when the virus made the jump from animals to humans was documented way back in 1970 in which country then the country in which it was uh, documented was the democratic republic of congo bang in the central of central africa and then the disease spread a bit so it uh, did spread to these countries i did do a bit of homework with respect to geography i would say so the disease did spread to countries like cameroon and then this area that i made marked in green before you this would be nigeria in fact, uh, when I was searching uh, for the epidemiological component of the disease, what I found was that uh, in Nigeria, an uh, outbreak has been documented as early as 2018. More than 500 cases have been documented in Nigeria as early in 2018. But because of, I think, the geopolitics and because most of the time Asian countries and then African countries do not get a lot of media coverage, so it never hit the headlines. But this virus was present in these countries for, you know, way back in... Uh, 
uh, I would say 10 years ago also. So uh, there has been a sudden spurt. I mean, these are the main countries, Congo, Nigeria, Cameroon, Sierra Leone, from where the virus has uh, suddenly jumped and uh, uh, and has resulted in this outbreak of large number of cases in Europe. And a lot of these are mainly related to close uh, personal contact. It could be heterosexual and homosexual contact. And why I'm saying that is because a lot of these cases of monkeypox initially begin with lesions around the genitals. So as doctors, we might be thinking that this person could be having herpes. There's a possibility that because the rash is in the palms and soles, we might be thinking the person might be having secondary syphilis. So a lot of these cases are actually presenting as a STD and then it results in a full-blown rash all over the body. It's a confluent rash that would be occurring. And why it is important to know about the origin of the virus is that when I'm talking about the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Central African variant, the case fatality rate with the Central African variant was a huge 10%. That is almost equivalent to what we saw with Delta in 2021 in India approximately and though obviously the government data is a little lesser but we had was a high mortality with Delta. Now when it comes to the West African variant which is spreading from Nigeria I mean you know from Nigeria I said 500 cases in 2018 and the boom there's like 1000 cases all over in the world and it's it's originating most of the time from here and then you have cases being reported in Israel and then one in Argentina one in uh, uh, Singapore like that and and when it comes to the West African variant the West African variant, the case fatality rate is close to 1%, which would be identical to what we are seeing with the current strain of COVID-19. So, I mean, considering this case fatality rate and the R0 number, this, this is a virus which is not to be taken lightly. We are adequately prepared, as you will see in the subsequent slides, but then it's not to be taken lightly because of the case fatality rates that I have mentioned here before you. And as far as the natural reservoir is concerned, CDC does mention that... Uh, uh, though initially it was unknown, it has been documented. The one of the important reservoirs that has been documented is the African rodents. And the first outbreak of this in America was reported way back in 2003 when there were 47 confirmed cases. Now, during this outbreak in US, it was found that people who had been vaccinated for smallpox did not suffer from the disease. It was only the younger population, those who had not received the smallpox vaccine are the ones who suffered from the disease manifestations, though in majority of cases, the manifestations were not severe enough to result in a mortality. As I told you, most of the time, this is the African giant pouch, pouch rat. And uh, I would say Americans have weird habits that they keep these rats as pets. So initially in US, uh, there was... Uh, this disease which was imported into Texas, the state of Texas from Ghana and uh, then as I was talking about the Nigeria part, uh, the monkey that has been incriminated in this uh, has been um, the Suti Magebi monkey. Now once we know about the reservoir which primarily is I would say the African rodents and the monkeys are limited to only a small component, uh, we would move on to the subsequent slide where we will talk about how the disease would be spreading. One of the primary routes of spread would be droplets. So it could be a contact with infected animal, it could be bite or scratch of the animal, then contact with the person who's suffering from these lesions. I mean, if you're touching the source of this person, I mean, a family member is touching the source of this person, he can get infected even handling the bed sheet or the linen of this person. So that means that as healthcare workers, we need to be cautious. We have to uh, be putting on our uh, PPEs uh, and PPE gear is to be out when we are, ha we are having to handle these cases in future. And I really wish that really does not happen. Uh, during intimate contact, what I mean by intimate contact is sexual contact. And uh, well, you see, uh, when you compare this with the HIV virus, HIV virus can be transmitted through semen, but this virus is not getting transmitted by semen. So as such, I would say that even in rape parties, even if they distribute condoms, it's really not going to help because close personal contact would anyway be present. And then I found this very surprising information that it has been documented to spread from mother, I mean, a pregnant lady to her child. So there's a possibility of vertical transmission also, and the baby would be born all covered with the uh, vesicobullous lesions or maculopapular rash that would be a congenital monkeypox. As far as the incubation period of the disease is concerned, it's 7 to 14 days with upper limit of 21 days. And in America in 2003, they introduced quarantine period of 21 days after which no more cases were reported. The disease begins with a standard fever followed by rash after 1 to 2 days. 
the rash tends to evolve initially it's going to be a macule which is non palpable obviously then it will evolve into a papule and then this papule will be having this uh, you know umbilicated umbilicated appearance right at the middle so it would be like a umbilicated papule and uh, the size of these blisters would increase and lots of time uh, these lesions might be present around the lips or on the penis of a person or around the anus of a person as a result of which uh, a doctor might get the impression that this person is suffering from a sexually transmitted disorder in fact these uh, umbilicated papules would also be occurring in the palms of the person though as you can see now the scabbing is occurring so the rash uh, i mean we always read in medical science no uh, lesions in the palms rash in palms and soles is a feature of secondary syphilis so i just thought that i'll show you this image uh, just to sensitize you to the fact that lot of these cases begin as a query query std and then suddenly there is a confluent rash occurring all over the body which would be associated with constitutional symptoms that would be headache muscle pain and lymphadenopathy now lymphadenopathy is one thing that is not found in smallpox so the remaining features of uh, blisters all over the body which is going to take maybe 2 to 4 weeks to disappear would be seen even in smallpox but we do not have a lymphadenopathy present uh, and then mostly the lesions in smallpox are not found in the genitals or not found ar around the anus i mean it it begins as a rash mainly on the body most cases of monkeypox in europe have been uh, starting as a query query std and then my, it it was a full blown picture that developed in a patient other features would be like chills exhaustion and a rash and the total duration of symptoms would be something in the range of about 2 to 4 weeks we'll now focus on what would be a suspect case so anybody with a new onset rash who meets the epidemiological criteria and there are three of them that are to be satisfied any one of these to be satisfied it could be contact with the person who's had a similar kind of rash or contact with exotic pets like the ones i was talking about the african giant pouch rat or travel to the endemic zone and because of frequent air travel obviously caution is to be exercised and confirmed case would be one who could be confirmed either by pcr or by a culture and this pcr would be done either on the lesions or it could be a respiratory swab that could also be taken like the ones that we take in covid-19 in majority of cases this is going to be a self limiting illness i mean i told you case fatality rate is only about 1% and the severe disease would mean that there could be lesions that could turn hemorrhagic so just like you are aware that in chicken pox in adults there is a possibility that the lesions can turn hemorrhagic even in uh, patients of monkey pox the lesions have turned hemorrhagic extensively present all over the body and then this could result in secondary bacterial infection so the person could end up with sepsis or septic shock and can even end up with encephalitis what are the high risk groups with respect to this virus then it would be anybody with a decreased cell mediated immunity so the list is what i don't need to explain i mean anybody who's undergone a solid organ transplantation and is on immunocompressive uh, suppressive treatment aids positive patients patients on steroids patient who is receiving irradiation and then uh, the vulnerable population would be children less than 8 years of age and then women who are either pregnant or are breastfeeding we shall now focus about the countermeasures that would be deployed to fight against this infection i'm going to describe before you a couple of drugs which are uh, fda approved for smallpox and in cases of monkey pox in majority of cases you do not need any treatment but if the person is having severe manifestations like i said extensive hemorrhage occurring potential to go into sepsis development of septic shock then these antivirals can be used uh, one of the drugs which uh, one should be aware of is and is fda approved is ticovirimat the second name that i'll write uh, you guys are going to be more comfortable with the name that is sildofovir and the third one is a little tongue twisting name that is brincidofovir and all of these as i've said are uh, fda approved uh, when it comes to post exposure prophylaxis we also have post exposure prophylaxis in the form of immunoglobulin available so that's a sigh of relief that if a doctor is exposed he can be given this uh, 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 intravenously and uh, the doctor uh, would not suffer from any severe ramifications or manifestations of the disease and then uh, i would like you to comment on i am going to tell you the brand name of one of the vaccines here there are actually two the name that i'm not taking at the moment and i want you to find out and comment in the chat box below or comment in the in the comment section subsequently is the one which has a side effect of myopericarditis so i'm telling you about the brand name which the americans are stockpiling at the moment uh, that is gynios and in fact you know uh, i'll just show you these uh, 
news news clippings you know that us is stockpiling 36000 uh, doses of the gynios monkeypox vaccine which would be available to obviously high risk patients it, you don't need it for everybody but then uh, gynios is a subcutaneously administered vaccine there would be two doses that would be given and they would be given at a interval of approximately 28 days and why we are already having a vaccine against it is because i told you about the outbreaks that have occurred in the past so unlike covid 19 which really caused us by surprise this virus has not been able to caught us catch us by surprise i would say because we have been uh, handling it monitoring it and also developing drugs against it and vaccines against it for a very long time so right from 2003 in america 2018 19 20 in nigeria cameroon and democratic republic of congo it's been a long story but i can say that uh, medical science has made uh, extensive uh, i would say uh, growth by leaps and bounds so that at least we are better prepared for handling this particular infection so at the end of this video all i can say is that uh, uh, there is still light at the end of the tunnel after all because we are well adept and we are uh, capable of handling this infection that is what i think we'll be able to and uh, well uh, towards the end i would just like to say keep hammering guys keep on learning this was just a additional information that i thought that i should share with you uh, from the healthcare professional perspective and i do not have any financial disclosures to make here i do not have any association with any of the brand names that i was speaking at this particular point of time i do not have any association with the vaccine company that i was talking about thank you so much for hearing me out